Protest leaders in Israel vow to keep the pressure on the government until it shelves its controversial judicial reform plan entirely. U.S. President Joe Biden renews his calls for the ban of assault weapons as police search for a motive in latest school shooting by former pupil. Amnesty International's annual report denounces the West's double standards in dealing with human rights violations. A final deal on the ban of combustion engine vehicle sales by 2035 is done after the European Commission and Germany reached an agreement. Demonstrations in Israel continued into the night, capping a day of unprecedented nationwide strikes that paralyzed the country and pushed Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu into suspending his judicial overhaul plan. Weeks of mass protests have tipped the country into its most severe domestic crisis in years. Earlier, Netanyahu told the nation he was pausing the plan. The plan, which would give Netanyahu's government greater power to handpick judges, including those presiding over his corruption trial, has pitted liberal and secular Jewish Israelis against more right-wing and religiously conservative factions, even raising fears of a civil war, much to American alarm. But after Netanyahu announced he was delaying his contentious judicial overhaul, pro- and anti-Israeli government protesters faced off in Tel Aviv. Despite Netanyahu's concession, protest leaders have called for demonstrations to continue until he shelves the legislation entirely. U.S. President Joe Biden reiterates his calls for the banning of assault weapons following the latest mass shooting in America. On Monday, a shooter wielded two assault-style rifles and a pistol and killed three children and three adults at a private Christian school in Nashville. Speaking at the Women's Business Summit, the president conveyed his distress over the deaths. It's heartbreaking. Uh family's worst nightmare. And I want to commend the police who responded incredibly swiftly, within minutes. You know, uh, the shooter in this situation reportedly had two assault weapons and a pistol, two AK-47. So I call on Congress again to pass my assault weapons ban. It's about time that we begin to make some more progress. Police have named the suspect as a 28-year-old woman, Audrey Hale, who identified as transgender and was a former pupil at the school. She was shot by officers. Investigators have been searching Hale's home for a motive. No, we have a manifesto. We have some writings that we're going over uh, that uh, pertain to this day, the actual incident. We have a map drawn out of how this was all going to take place. According to data from the Gun Violence Archive, Monday's shooting marked the 129th mass shooting in the U.S. so far in 2023. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has honored soldiers with state medals during a working trip to Zaporizhia. Zelensky also visited a military hospital and talked to wounded soldiers. The region hosts Europe's largest nuclear plant, and the Ukrainian president met with International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Grossi to discuss security there. Grossi plans to visit the plant, which is held by Russian forces, later this week. Two people have been killed in Russian attacks on the city of Slovyansk in the Donetsk region. Five high-rise buildings were damaged when two S-300 missiles struck the city and seven private houses were also destroyed. Meanwhile, Ukraine's armed forces have shared footage showing destruction in the town of Bakhmut. British military intelligence says Russia appears to be moving to a defensive strategy in eastern Ukraine.
Amnesty International's annual report draws attention to the West's racist double standards in dealing with human rights violations. The organization gives as an example the reception of Ukrainian refugees based on their country of origin. They didn't offer the same treatment to those escaping war and repression in Syria and Afghanistan. The USA as well, of course, a very vocal critic of uh, Russia's aggression on Ukraine in a welcome move, also admitted tens of thousands of Ukrainians fleeing the war. But it subjected uh, Haitian asylum seekers, asylum seekers from Haiti, to arbitrary detention, humiliating ill treatment that amounted to race-based torture. The organization also says some steps taken against Russia, like the UN General Assembly voting to condemn its actions in Ukraine and the International Criminal Court opening an investigation into crimes in Ukraine, showed inconsistency. European states, among others, exhibited double standards as well because while do condemning Russia, they condoned or were complicit in grave violations by their allies, uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt. And, and Israel, among others. Uh, last year, Russia was able to use its veto, veto powers to paralyze the UN Security Council, which is, just can't be allowed to continue. And it needs to give more voice to countries and situations which have traditionally been ignored, especially in the global south. Amnesty International also draws attention to new laws to calm down protests, calling on governments to stop using excessive force and to control the trade in law enforcement equipment. It's another day of national strikes against the pension reform in France. Once again, disrupted train services, closed schools and halted fuel deliveries are set to make everyday life difficult as the unions seek to force a government retreat on the deeply unpopular policy. 24 hours earlier, the mass protests reached the Louvre as a crowd blocked the museum's entrance. The peaceful demonstrations gathered outside the Paris Museum's glass pyramid, wielding banners that read, work less to live more. quiet train stations and deserted airports across Germany on Monday as a massive 24-hour strike has halted much of the country's air traffic, rail services and commuter lines. Workers at airports, ports, railways, buses and metro lines in much of Europe's largest economy are demanding wage hikes in the face of brisk inflation. We are striking for 10 10,5% more gehalt. Mindestens aber 500 Euro. Die Inflationsrate in Deutschland ist gerade sehr hoch und war auch im letzten Jahr schon sehr hoch. Und die Kollegen brauchen das Geld, um über die Runden zu kommen. Millions of commuters and travelers are affected by the strikes. Many opted to drive, causing traffic delays, while those who could worked from home. Well, on the one way, it's affecting my comfort, of course, but on the other way, well, I'm really not sure what's going on with their guys' salaries and other stuff, so... But I think, like, they have rights to do things like this, like, half, half. Employers have so far refused protesters' demands of a 10 to 12 percent pay hike, instead offering a rise of just 5 percent and two one-off payments of 1,000 and 1,500 euros. After much wrangling, a deal seems to be done. Combustion engine vehicles won't be sold in the EU after 2035. That's barring an exception for ones that run on so-called e-fuels that capture CO2 from the atmosphere. The ban was already supposed to be a done deal, but some countries, including Germany, threw a spanner in the works at the 11th hour earlier this year. An agreement was struck over the weekend, though, between the European Commission and Berlin which will see the regulation finally approved at a vote of EU energy ministers on Tuesday, even if some countries still oppose it. Italy and Poland say they will vote against the ban, while Bulgaria and Romania will abstain on the vote. The Italian government says the deal does not respect the principle of technological neutrality. It would like the exception to be extended to other types of fuels, 
La Germania lavora soprattutto per i carburanti chimici e, e vuole avere la certezza, da, da quella che è la mia ricostruzione, che si facciano le verifiche necessarie. E questo è corretto, come noi chiediamo sui biocarburanti e stiamo facendo sostanzialmente la stessa cosa. Quindi per questo c'è stata una convergenza tra noi e la Germania. After blocking the ban for three weeks, Germany is now satisfied with the agreement. For other countries opposed to the deal, it now looks impossible to block it. The details of the agreement, however, have not been unveiled. But NGOs that promote sustainable transport have already expressed concerns at an exemption for e-fuels. Producing uh, those e-fuels and, um, and burning them in internal combustion engine is actually very inefficient. And it, uh, it can require up to five times uh, more energy with respect to, to electric vehicles. NGOs see a risk of loopholes being created, as engines designed for e-fuels could also run traditional ones. They also underline supply issues. These fuels don't exist at the current stage, or at least they don't exist in significant volumes and numbers. Uh, the same uh, estimates and forecasts from the refining industry talk about the 0.4% availability at the pump in 2030 and a 3% in 2035, the, the year of the phase out. After the formal adoption of the ban, the European Commission will propose measures for the approval of new vehicles powered by e-fuels after 2035.